Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we hello, can sit hello. back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else remotely attached to it, because that's what we do. We sit around and talk about the stuff that we find interesting. Occasionally, we laugh. So if you hate humor, <laughs> avoid this show. We can um, humor, aw. entertainment, no. any kind of uh, light uh, take on the news. Yeah, um, no, no, this isn't the show for you. Sorry. Um, Pedro, Pedro, <laughs> and I'm going to need you to dial that down just a little bit, a little more monotone. Okay. When we talk. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Or, or I could just like over compress our audio. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Get that like NPR, like no dynamic range. That's oh, our boy. favorite kind of podcast to listen to. So beautiful. Welcome people. to 103.5 FM. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Um, <laughs> don't. Uh, what's new? I got a couple of new things to play around. First thing I want to tell everyone mm. is it is finally kind of, sort of, almost, if you squint safe to set a bullseye and run it in production, because that's what I'm doing right now. Every single thing in the studio has been switched over. All the uh, co-host boxes, uh, the thread booper and jack box all running. And it's great right up until something breaks and I'll immediately throw Debian under the bus and um, mm -hmm. no good times. Uh, pretty much the code freeze kicked in. So you're getting like three or four packages and it's update stuff right now. Haven't run into any issues, but I said to myself, then that's not enough challenge. That's not enough chaos in your life. You like uncertainty. That's your favorite thing. Constantly changing, shifting. That's our new <laughs> That's all the stuff we got. Uh, that, what you're seeing right there, is one, two, three, four fiber noodles, two wow. direct attach <laughs> coppers. And what that replaced was, you see that switch above it? Mm. That was full. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I significant. That. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have two spare 10 gig ports left. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. Ripping awesome. that out was an adventure. And of course, that showed up Sunday, like before I was even done with the show. Like, welp, yeah, I'm going to be doing, there's no point. I'm like, oh, no, we just set that. And get some rest and tackle it. No, it's 3 a.m. crawling around in here, ripping out like giant umbilical cables <laughs> with like 10 meter cats. It's like, uh, I, I didn't unwrap them either. I just drug them, wrapped them up, <laughs> put them down. I'm like, just in case you're going to stay mm -hmm. just like that. But yeah, that's it. Uh, I've been playing around with a 10 gig fiber. Everything seems to, this is really the first test. Now, the fun thing nice. about this, the exciting thing is three of those cards were $12 a piece. They, they were a test. I was talking to Pedro. I'm like, mm. 12 bucks if they, they explode? I, yeah, no whatever. biggie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no big deal. <laughs> and uh, from a brand I've never tangled with, but you know, it, this old server hardware, but Found, you know, I've mapped out what transceivers are compatible with them. And I'm going to show you a little challenge. Two cards. You can connect two boxes, two cards, two transceivers, and some fiber cable for under 50 bucks. Mm, very good. 10 gig link. Come on, Pedro. Under 50 bucks, you can yeah. hook all of that up, drag a file from one computer, <laughs> drag it back, and probably never take advantage of it again. Be like, yeah, it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the my uh, NAS that uh, only runs at uh, gigabit, it it it's doing its job. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about KDE though, man? Oh yeah, I KDE. Know, um, I, I get done doing all this, and Pedro's like, Psh, let, let me let me tell you what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I upgraded KDE to uh, 521. The I saw the updates come in yesterday before the stream, and I'm like, no. No, no, we're going to wait till after the stream because, well, it's a KDE update. Uh, mm -hmm. Memory leaks, mm -hmm. stuff just straight up crashing. It, yeah, no, let, let's just wait till the stream is done and I'll do that then. So I did, rebooted, and oh, yeah, everything is working okay. The first thing I noticed was the um, scrolling was really smooth. So I figured, is this karmic balance because i was streaming yesterday and the controller that i was using to play jedi fallen order well it just refuses to uh even connect to blue teeth anymore 
It's Aww. nothing sees it, be it this box or phones or nothing sees the Bluetooth. So, yeah, no, I edged my bets on the karmic balance and it seems to have paid off. So, kudos. <laughs> Man, yeah, d- those, those worries are legitimately real because you know, and sometimes you're like, hey, I would. I when I say this is because I'm very familiar with like having to do the scales. Like, was that a fair trade? All right, I guess it was. Like that one worked out pretty good. What's that with you, Jim? <laughs> oh boy! Besides doing lots of Linux podcasting, I'm still working on getting my piano moved so I can start getting stuff out of this room. But I need Steve Husband to help me, and he works a lot of hours, so it's good. That's part, <laughs> that part has been difficult, but at least we know now we're going to put it on the other side of the living room temporarily until we can call people to come get it. <laughs> All you have to do is a project. Don't try to give it away. Don't try to give it away. Push it up to the corner. Put a sign on it for $100. Go back in the house. Somebody will steal it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they won't take it if it says free. I'm like, ah, oh, it's taking mm-hmm. some. I'm like, oh, I can see yeah. that. <laughs> Wait, I can just Aww. take that and not pay the. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just put Steve Husband under the bus. No, I didn't mean it that way, honey. He just has very, very little time to do things. <laughs> so we have a lot of projects Shame going on. on. You, Steve, for working, <laughs> guy mean. Yeah. <laughs> also, Aww. stop hiding under the bus and go move the piano. Listen, <laughs> bus is love. Bus is life. <laughs> Let's get right into it with a little Fedora news. Yes. So Fedora 34, uh, everyone's been speculating when uh, it might come out. Well, the dates have uh, already been sort of kind of leaked. There were some provisional ones. And right now, the only one that is effective is the Fedora 34 beta will be between March 16th and 23. And if everything goes to plan with those betas and everyone, you know, figures out uh, all, what all the bugs are. <laughs> uh, the provisional expected release date for the final version of Fedora 34 is on April 20th. So that is very nice. That is uh, very good to see. It's a Fedora release, so it will inevitably be delayed. Actually, the past couple ones have actually been on time. So, you know, they, they may surprise us yet. Uh, there are also... Uh, they've been doing a lot of work, uh, to get KD on ARM, uh, working better. Uh, and the, even, you know, if that's not a particularly high bar to meet because I have Pinebook Pro and that's what it came with by default and my God, uh, the, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, Wayland is also going to be the, uh, future for the default KDE spin, if you just download the KDE spin, it comes with Wayland by default for Fedora 34. So, you know, given how long Fedora has been uh, pushing Wayland by default on the GNOME spin, that's very good to see. That's very good to see. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's really cool because now the KDE Plasma images of Fedora 34 will be available for ARM 64-bit devices. And yes. this this will be um, a, in inclusion as well as as their XFCE and server images as well, which will be really nice. And the i3 tiling window manager now will have a Fedora 34 spin. I think that's cool. They're uh, setting up another window manager, uh, one of our favorites uh, that that will be already configured for Fedora 34. Great. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. the big feature, the most exciting feature, <laughs> the ultimate feature, um, one might say um, the only, is XFC 416 is going to be included in the latest <laughs> version of Fedora. And why is that important? Because you're, you're going to need somewhere to land when you tap that eject button on your Wayland experience. <laughs> now, hopefully, hopefully that won't be the case. But if so, you got a very, very firm little place to land. And that makes me happy to see that. Also, uh, Pipewire audio is going to be all the things. Yeah. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. Fedora is getting back into being that exciting distro. You know, maybe a year ago, two years, it was about two years ago, when I was playing around with a couple of distributions in here, I remember setting up Fedora, and I come from Fedora the old, in the olden times. Mm-hmm. And I just told them, like, that was boring. It just, 
<laughs> you installed it. It was, it work. was sta- a stable huh. workstation. Well, it is <laughs> installed. <laughs> I didn't, yes. I didn't have to fight you. Look, I'm at a graphical desktop. What have you done to my fedora? This is going to bring some of the fun back. And that makes me excited. But let's stick with the Wayland train because you might do things like we do. Stream, play the Twitch games. And to do that, you can use OBS Studio. And up until very recently, um, if you were trying to do that with OBS, you're going to have a bad time. Well, they got the scaffolding in place. Now, don't expect everything to just sing right now. Because, you know, it's not quite there, but it should work. Kind of. Now, right now, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, well, well, you're going to have to wait, you know, a little while longer. Things are in development for that finally. But with Fedora and Ubuntu doing the Wayland Dance, this is, this is very, very welcome. And mm-hmm. one thing I'm curious about, just reading through this. Now, this is a bunch of EGL Wayland stuff, um, you know, zero copy. This was a big, big, honking, massive update to OBS. And it's going to be the next, I'm assuming it's going to be rolling out the next version of OBS. But I want to know what the state of Pipewire audio is in OBS because I couldn't really find anything. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not brave enough to try it right now. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am curious, but that is good news because that's a big, chunky, chunky project to like, hey, Amazing. Oh, things are starting to change now. That that that's yeah. like throwing your Pedro up into the air and watching the wind carry in a certain direction. You're like, uh oh. And that's who I want to talk to. Developers. Um Waylon is coming. Like for reals yes. this time. Yes. So, uh start today and you'll only be a little behind of the Pedro. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, am I a unit of measurement yeah, or a scale sense. with which to <laughs> <laughs> compare like people's, uh, you know, unwillingness to do things? Well, what is it? <laughs> no, um, you're the byproduct of what happens when you overthink a joke. <laughs> but... <laughs> Don't let that get you down because Touché. we got fresh codes. And I'm talking about yes, VLC 4.0. It's a snack peak. Look at the work in progress. There's a new interface. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Art Theron dropped this in our show notes. Thank you. He's a beautiful, pretty patron. Mm-hmm. Now, people are mad, but not really. I mean, let's take a look at it. You know, you go from the clunk that we're all used to. I mean, it is yeah. clock, but hey, man, it's a familiar clock, right? And you're like, mm, all right, yeah. I'm used to that. Now it's all slick, single interface, and, you know, goodbye, like, file managers and stuff. Media players is going to pull up, like, thumbnails. Eh, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I'm looking at it. Uh, it it's that single window interface as opposed to having, like, a mm-hmm. play bar, stop controls and all that. You mouse over, your controls pop up, and uh, it gets the job done like that. Uh, I'm not against Against it at all, man. It's nice. It's clean. It's a modern interface for VLC. And uh, if you want to play the home game, the reason I'm throwing this in there, you can play around with the nightly builds and you don't have to compile it yourself. There's a Faustian deal, though. You have to install Snap. Then Snaps are available. Now, links to this will be in the show notes. Um, Pedro, <laughs> go, you, you take that bullet and tell me how it works. No. No. <laughs> I have snaps uh, blacklisted on apt. <laughs> that, that's Aww. just not happening. <laughs> I'll have to do it then, Ben. <laughs> I have one of my boxes of snaps <laughs> enabled. <laughs> I'm just using so, like MPV these days. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still using the classic M player, but I, I like that the new VLC will open to a media browser interface when you first launch it. That's actually really, really cool. And it makes it easier for your average user to just, you know, open a file and start playing it or or paste in an URL to start streaming. So I I think these interface changes are are needed and it's welcome. It is. I mean, and well, mm-hmm. face it, VLC interface, it, it was clunky. It mm-hmm. is like right now. Yes. <laughs> you start drilling down, trying to get to something. I'm like, oh, no, oh look. It's like, I don't remember which of the sub menus I need to go to to find this one specific no, thing. Pedro, you were in the I right sub menu. You were in the right sub menu the, this entire time, you, but you forgot to click the advanced checkbox. Oh yeah, you have to t- yeah. tick box at the bottom to show yeah. the advanced option. Oh, there it is. Okay. 
Which then you also, uh, if the focus here is on the GUI and dumbing it down, like the developer said, can we have uh, like SMB, uh, SSHFS network share auto discovery? So mm. I don't have to type the <laughs> network address every Very time good, I yeah. start it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> would that make you happy? Yeah, th- that would make me uh, at least two events happier. Yeah. Don't do it then. Absolutely <laughs> do not do that. Aww. <laughs> because they, they can't focus on that until they fix the uh, like reappearing, dis- disappearing, reappearing like Jack Sings. <laughs> oh <laughs> because auto connect or not that stop it, it's completely unusable in the chat like pop into existence i'll auto connect to the first two connections wrong out oh, next song let's destroy those sinks let's make some brand new ones why are you doing this <laughs> and that's why we use also player but <laughs> what do we have? Oh, we got a new kernel. Yeah, we oh, yes. do. So on Valentine's Day, uh, this past Sunday, Linus Torvalds re- released Linux kernel 5.11. And there's lots of good changes in, in this version. Uh, this release includes Intel's software guard extensions, or otherwise known as SGX technology that allows developers to use walled off enclaves of memory. So hopefully that will help <laughs> some developers, <laughs> but I, I know it's uh, had some issues in the past before, but that's good. So it this release also um, has XFS uh, becoming more sensitive to damaged file systems and won't mount them until they've been repaired, which is always really good. Yes. And we mentioned that this was in the works. We've been talking about it here on LWW. It includes support for the Guitar Hero controllers and the UA Game Console, as well as the Wii U controllers. So good for us in the world of gaming. <laughs> I need someone to uh, bang suggest or bang s UA Game Console Lord. quickly. <laughs> <Ua>? <laughs> Yeah, the um no, uh, actually one of the things that Jill brought up is the um up the uh, like the uh, performance updates for uh, AMD processors. Those only seem to be an issue if you were running the Schedutil or the on-demand CPU governor, mm. which to be fair is what most distros tend to default to. It's mostly on-demand. Uh so Probably it did affect you if you never touched your governor, but yeah, if you're living that performance life, that probably won't make much of a difference. <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta think about this, man. This, I still think it's good news for everyone with AMD CPU. 100%. Oh, it is. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, options. Good options. I'm, I'm down with that. Frequency scaling, the, like, those regressions have been there for a minute. Yep. So, it's good to have that sorted. Now, there is support for the new Intel GPU hotness, which we were all excited about until we sold benchmarks and we're like, nah. <laughs> we're then good. It, we no. all knew it was going to be IGP level, but then, it, then Intel was like, <laughs> oh, were you not disappointed enough? We're going to tie it to Intel CPU and motherboard. We're Intel. <laughs> <laughs> to which the rest of the industry is like, oh, okay. No know, one cares. Go back to the kids' table, Intel. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that just yeah. completely moved it. But hey, man. Uh, oh, the ThinkPad, the palm sensors. Yeah, they're not going to go haywire anymore. You know, like when you yeah. touch them with, with your big, mm-hmm. with your big finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, palm detection is no longer going to immediately flip out. So if you're typing on the keyboard uh, or you palm accidentally the touchpad, the keyboard stops working. Oh. We've all had issues what? with that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> as, as I plug my mouse in, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah yeah I that's use... why that's why you keep a usb mouse always yes <laughs> always with your thinkpad the only time you will ever catch me using like a trackpad is like when that laptop has been pulled out of the rack and opened up i'm like mm-hmm. oh look there's no mouse i gotta deal with this okay 
thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are teeny tiny too. It's like big, massive drawer to have the screen and the keyboard. It's teeny tiny little trackpad. Listen, I will take that over dragging a cart <laughs> around a data center any day. <laughs> I have done Aww. this in the days of CRTs to Pedro Mateus. This was not And of course, it was always the wobbly cart. Yeah. Yes. The, one of the wheels was really wobbly. It just made it extra hard. It's like, you have to keep pushing for one side. I personally have always loved the old laptops with trackballs in it. The little mini trackballs. I love those. They just don't Much make any sense because you got to flip them upside down to move the... Oh. <laughs> You scratch the screen up. That's no wonder they got rid of those. <laughs> now, Chrome is uh, no no Chrome yeah. for old books, man. Your old laptop Aww. collection. Oh no, you won't be able to own the latest Chrome and view web pages that just crush its single core processor. Yeah, uh, so already yeah, called 32 so. Bit. I know. So uh, <laughs> Google Chrome will no longer support pre SSE three computers from the early to mid two thousands. And the Chromium develop team stated that they will be dropping support for processors that lack SSE3 or streaming SIMD extensions 3 in x86 Chrome builds. And fortunately, this will not affect Mac OS Android or Chrome OS devices as they've had SSE3 enabled processors since 2014. So it won't affect those. But this will affect a tiny portion of Windows and Linux users like myself running Chrome <laughs> on old systems. And I do have a few old computers that I run Chrome on. But mostly I use Firefox because Firefox does not have these limitations. <laughs> yes. And Chrome already killed 32-bit support a while back. So yeah. at most you were running Chromium. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's just say Google have gone out of their way to make sure Chromium isn't, you know, fully functional anymore yeah. so yeah firefox i don't think yep. Vivaldi has a little bit uh Love thanks, our firefox, firefox. <laughs> use, use links man i mean yeah links l-i-n-k-s <laughs> or l-y-n-x or dillo don't, don't dillo kids oh or, midori midori yeah. i forgot about midori yes <laughs> and and Brouch. <laughs> yes, Brouch. <laughs> or, or I could reach over and pick up a cheap hundred dollar tablet, which performance wise wrecks any computer that couldn't run. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Probably watching higher resolution videos yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, for sure. I watched yeah. it 80p streaming while on a <laughs> mobile call on Discord or something. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. <sighs> oh, so we definitely talked about the Pine Phone, and they decided, yeah. like, instead of having all of these, ver- they didn't call it spins. What did they call it? Um, community, community editions. editions. Community editions. <laughs> it, it's spins with extra words. And uh, they're, they're going to narrow it down, and they decided to pick <laughs> one distribution. Turns out it was a wrong one. No. So Pine64 has a big <laughs> announcement since they dropped the community editions of the Pine Phone. And so the 100. $49 Linux Pine Phone picks Manjaro Arm running Plasma Mobile as its default preloaded OS. Very so nice. this is this is this is pretty interesting. And and I was really happy with this amount announcement. So uh Pine 64's uh Lucas Erksinski states Manjaro is our core partner, offering support for all our flagship Linux devices, including the Rock Pro 64 and the Pinebook Pro. Their work on the PinePhone has been indispensable, and their current OS images are among the best and most fully featured to the platform. And also, Plasma Mobile was the one of the first projects to back the PinePhone. So this yep. actually makes a lot of sense. And they've been porting uh, Plasma uh Plasma and KDE to phones for a long time, smartphones like way back, you know, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So and this they makes had sense. The netbook <laughs> layout, which made a lot of sense yeah. for stuff with touch screens. And yeah, that's what uh, Plasma Mobile sort of derives from. Yeah. But I absolutely get the why they decided to go with um, Manjaro. I have that same rock chip 3399 on the Pinebook Pro, like I mentioned earlier. And yeah, Manjaro. Everything works out of the box. You get full GPU acceleration from the Mali uh, Panfrost GPU mm-hmm. in that uh, mm-hmm. SOC. Nice. So, yeah, that that's like the one thing right now that you need to make those useful. And it does it out of the box. 
KD, on the other hand, like I mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, most of the issues that I had on the Pinebook Pro stemmed from KD. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Plasma Mobile variant is better. I don't know. I never <laughs> tried it. I, but I, I figured out why you don't run XFC, Pedro. But I do run XFC on the Pinebook <laughs> because that's the <laughs> one that works. Okay, see, this this is exactly the root cause. So if this is why you do not run XFC in your desk, there's not enough broken to complain about. It would make you sad. <laughs> it would make these episodes a lot less interesting, yes. That's one way of phrasing it. <laughs> <laughs> because if I don't have ammunition, you know, to complain about things, then what? <laughs> You'd be a happy whole person. <laughs> so uh searching stuff on youtube man do you remember who remembers uh you know raise your pinky toes if you remember the time before google bought youtube and the best way to search youtube was on google yes like youtube search it's like you didn't even bother it was laughable and like yeah Uh do the doom site google of site youtube from google and find it Mm -hmm. now 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 it's great but I have an idea to like kind of mix things up a little bit, Pedro. I'm gonna shift yes. the game. What if you want to search for things in the videos and not just text because you can see the text on the uh you can search for the text in a YouTube video? Well, some of them. But what if you could search for an image or something in a specific frame? Well, that's what uh, natural language YouTube search is trying to do. Try. Basically, that's it- not what I read. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, basically, it takes uh, what it does right now. You can try the um, the script as it is uh, to pull from the neural network. It uses clip uh, from OpenAI to parse each frame. It takes every nth frame, so whichever one you dictate, uh, and it feeds that to the neural network. The neural network attempts to make sense of what the frame is, and then it will try and match the frames that match your query, obviously. And it is something that's been, you know, like um, parsing pictures into words has been kind of a challenge for the AI. But there it is. It's an entire uh, neural network dedicated to just doing that. And that that's a very good idea because that you're at least guaranteed to find something that's somewhat related. Like, yeah, a green bike lane. There you go. A bunch of green bike lanes. And it it apparently from the uh, screenshots that they're showing, it seems to be doing a very good job. It still needs to download the YouTube video. Uh, so according to the uh, recording, uh, uh, recording industry association of America, that's illegal. Uh, you need to download the video from YouTube uh, so it can, you know, break out the video and parse uh, each frame individually, because I'm guessing it will take Google or YouTube or whoever uh, alphabet. I suppose that's the parent company. Mm-hmm. Uh, a mm-hmm. bit of money to actually integrate that and make it, you know, streaming as you're watching the video. That'd be interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm looking for this being becoming actually mainstream because using the power of AI and being able to search for things inside YouTube's vid- videos is so fantastic and so needed. There are times I would have liked to have that with a, a video that's especially an hour, two hours long. If I'm looking for something and I think this would be cool and I would love this to be a browser extension. I, I, <laughs> this is a, a good mm-hmm. use of a browser extension. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta throw I gotta throw some um, vision insight to what a nurse had dropped. Yeah, this is gonna be great to use to defeat captcha. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, that mm-hmm. was one of the things that AI still had trouble with. That's why you were fed those captchas by Google. Yeah, yeah, but we don't have to worry. <laughs> I didn't get a chance. To, uh, I need to know the Turing test for something natural language is four cheeseburger. <laughs> if I request floor cheeseburger and I do not receive the Hoff enjoying a delightful floor cheeseburger, then it doesn't pass. That's my Turing test. Yeah, you got to pass the floor cheeseburger test. So maybe captures are safe for now. But something I talked about recently was uh, this audio recording interface that I, I was very curious of. A German company, RME. 
They've been around forever. High, super high quality stuff and also super expensive stuff. They've been making a PCI interface card since 2003. And what threw me off was going to their web zone because, you know, I'm just reading about stuff. And it's like, you know, it's a history, right, Jill? Isn't that how you vintage stuff? You read about the old stuff and you're like, oh, man, that was neat. That's Aww. really neat. <laughs> and I was just having that moment. I was like, that was some pretty cool tech back in the day, back in the day of 2003. I'm still getting my mind around that. So I went over to their web zone to find some more uh, information on this you know, retro uh, card. <laughs> Lo and behold, it's on their web zone with a buy button. Buy button works. <laughs> More looking right now, they still make this brand new. You can buy a 2021 Army HDSP 9632. So I did. I didn't buy a new one because nice. that's like $700. But I found a used one on eBay. Made a video about it because it's like, hey man, this thing's 24-bit, 192K, and it's still made for a reason because they got it right the first time. There's only been three board revisions. I managed to do like one for about 160 bucks on eBay. Then I got the breakout cables and all that. I threw it to Jackbox and just testing things out. This thing, this was hilarious because um, remember that old um, TK, TCTK? It just doesn't scale. And it is so tiny, tiny, tiny. Had a fun time with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 100% Linux drivers. I mean, this thing's built into Allsyn, has been for a long time. It's got its own mixing software to program it and set it up. Works with Jack. Didn't have a problem with it. Shows up. Um, round trip latency was amazing. Uh, but that's what I wanted to see, man. I wanted to see why these were still made in 2021. I wanted to see what the difference between this and there's the PCIe version of this card, mm-hmm. which is $900. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see uh, just how well it managed the Linux in 2021. Spoilers, we're using it right now. I've been using it for like a month. Um, very awesome. pleased with it. I, I like finding stuff like that. And I also got interested. I went to RME forums. I went to Linux Musicians and um, the Adore. And just doing searches and people like, oh, I can't get it to work. It doesn't work. Which is almost 99% user error. N- not throwing that down because you know i back up what i say i'm like and here's how to do it you know it's not me going i smarter than you i'm like no i rtfm to be fair that's 99 percent mm-hmm. of the problems in general pedro not just pedro. Linux hardware pedro i need you to go back up in the air Aww. okay i'll stop paying attention now. <laughs> well this is this is nice Ben. it's a nice use of the pci uh port that we have in a lot of our even our, our modern workstation motherboards have a, still have a PCI slot. In fact, most of mine do. And uh, it's, it's nice because you don't have to take, take a PCIe spot, spot and uh, it's there anyways. So why not use it? And uh, if it's less there's expensive. There's a lot of reasons not to use it because <laughs> I can only verify that this works with one particular bridge chip. Oh, okay. <laughs> which I pointed out. And then I'm like, make sure, like, most people aren't going to buy this. This is a high end format converter this is not an audio yeah. interface. one of the first questions on youtube was somebody asking hey so i just buy this and i stick a microphone into it nope <laughs> not gonna work no. not even a little bit <laughs> <laughs> plug it in hey it'll plug right in won't get any audio from it whatsoever so there's a lot of rtfm and like no no what you oh you returned to is us that the one with the vga port <laughs> <laughs> two VGA ports. Well, two, nice. <laughs> um, so you can plug in a monitor. <laughs> there's the uh, one fifteen. It's legit. Got a nine pin and a fifteen pin. I will be doing a video, uh, just like a fun video, to show you guys how I hooked up. Uh, probably the coolest, uh, highest quality interface that you can get, like for the money. Just it's staggeringly good. But also why you'd never want to buy one. That video is coming down the line because, you know, it involves things like, oh, I, I need a particular way of hooking this up that you're not going to have at home. Like even with all this monstrosity of audio stuff in the rack, I have one other device that I could wire up another custom cable. You get in the feel for it. And you're like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. That's no. it. Go check it out. Uh, this this mm-hmm. one thing, it, it's if this is something you're looking for, you can get them for under 300 bucks on Reverb, eBay, wherever you may be, and go check them out. They are there and they are Linux compatible. So, yeah. Awesome. Full length PCI. 
<laughs> what about full length extended ISA? Still have some of those too. Well, You're thing- going to need a bigger case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, one of the things I had to point out in the video is I've seen reports of people using the PCIe by one riser, you know, just like, mm. oh, and like, hey, this one works with this chipset. That's why I kind of had hope because I was reading people saying they had ah. success with a particular chipset that was in the same form motherboard, which, you know, it's just that it's just built into the motherboard, you know, it's taking one of the mm. PCIe and and I also found there's still currently a 9632 on eBay for like $50 and guy going, well, I plugged it into this PCIe to PCI riser and it, it's dead now. Do you want it? Mm. Give me 50 bucks for it. Mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I, I enjoy bringing this kind of information, but I have, I have no illusion. I, I take a big stack of time and a big stack of my own money every time I make one of these and just light it up mm-hmm. but hopefully <laughs> hopefully people will find it informative <laughs> but let's stay on the uh, audio train mm-hmm. uh sonobus it is a well it is a high quality network audio streaming application which uh, currently it is available for linux you can download the sauce and build it uh, I did have a look. It's like, oh, is that for Linux? Okay. Click the download button. Oh, you got to build it. Okay, fine. Went to the Git, looked at the build instructions. Oh, oh, you already did everything for me. Okay, I'll do the thing. <laughs> did the thing and kudos to them. Very good job. It uh, built out of the box. Uh, I did start it up just to see how it would work. Cranked up the monitor and uh, spoke into the microphone and it sounded crunchy <laughs> like very very crunchy very very staticky with the uh default setting so there's uh some uh audio shenanigans going on in the background that i do not understand but i just wanted to try and see if it worked and technically it did now this is gonna so, be a fantastic <laughs> tool i mean it's real-time network audio streaming it's for collaboration if like if we wanted to jam now i can't overcome physics like um this isn't gonna happen and we're not gonna be able to have like a jam session between like, believe it or not, Pedro and I <laughs> could probably get it to like a 256 buffer where you can deal with it. That's like, um, <laughs> if you ever been on stage, like having the PA system, I don't know, like on the other side of the stage, seven stadium. meters. No, 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 about seven <laughs> meters away. So that's just, you're dealing with sound propagation through air and like you can deal with it if you don't have an IFB. But, you know, like, in the state's local area, anybody on that island you're on, it'd be great. Like if you were going to like that. Now I'm thinking about playing around with it for the show because it, we can mix and match with audio quality. We can have a fully uncompressed PCM audio or just Opus or mixing between the two. Um, standalone. Mm, very good. For Linux only right now, which is kind of a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because I can give like the Pulse Audio peasants like here, you set it up this way. And, you know, the Jack uh, using Master Race, like Jordan and myself, we can be like, Better yet, we would like it as a VST3 plugin so we can just drop it into our um, mm. session manager mm. and be like, hey, we're going to do it that way. I don't know. It's definitely something to play around with, but please keep in mind there is no echo cancellation, automatic noise reduction, or anything. This is just a straight audio channel. This is like net jack for the internet. It's just going to send, mm. send, and they're trying to make it easy to do, which is, this is, now you're like, hey, WebRTC, Ven. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be fair they do a very good job they do have a server that they use just for discovery of the other uh clients yeah so you can connect to other people you can do public and, groups and you can point it directly at yep. ip addresses and you can uh, after you're in the call it's just peer-to-peer mm-hmm. so that's very nice i'm, <laughs> I'm hopeful I'm, I'm i'm keeping my eye on it much like mm-hmm. i'm keeping my eye on you know setting all this stuff up you know we do a lot of stuff with the software just using obs and taking advantage of that and using ndi and all these other fun things if you're setting up an event maybe maybe you don't want to spend a few years getting everything stuck together and tied together using like an all-in-one unit uh something that's been able to do that for a long time is the black magic atem video switchers they just released a mini version reasonably priced you can plug in you know couple of different sources like say i had four or five hdmi cameras and i wanted to switch between them and send out like one main feed with an audio mix down and all that that was there but despite linux users begging black magic 
for years and like, hey, can we get like some Linux software for this thing so <laughs> we can control it remotely without having to be on the board? And of course, Black Magic whispered, hey, but <laughs> somebody sat down over a weekend, as so often happens in the Linux community and reverse engineered. So we now have the open switcher control and this Pretty much as everything's, they're, they're, you immediately get the idea right there. Like, oh, I can just load this up on a tablet with touch screen. I don't have to be in, sitting in front of the switcher. It's available as a flat pack if you want to play with it. Don't want to go to a lot of deal, detail about this because this is something that if you have one specialized use case, you've been looking for it. There it is. I just wanted to bring that to it. You know, just some attention. I, I don't really have anything more to say other than that's neat. And I love reverse engineered stuff, except for that one person on Twitter who got an argue, argument with me because. All reverse engineered drivers were hacking and they would only accept something as being Linux native if they could download the drivers from the manufacturer's website. True story. Oh, so they're hmm. not going to like Intel's drivers at all you. or AMD's. Uh -uh. Wow. <laughs> That's special. Yeah. <laughs> See, the best I found this week on Twitter was a dude saying that uh, Linux gaming is dead and uh, mm -hmm. Proton doesn't work, yeah. to which I took a great shot of my uh, all-time most played games on Steam. It's like, man, I wish someone would have told me before I spent all that time. <laughs> it's always good to get the screenshot because uh, sometimes you just get to go back. And I, I do it for fun. This is for my amusement. Um I, I, I do the same thing Pedro does, but I do it for, I, I dispel audio and video myths. And I very pleasant about it because the whole point is I'm like, Hey man, and I'm not trying to convert anyone. This is where they, this is where they get lost. Cause they think I'm trying to sell them some Linux. I'm like, Hey psst, kid, come over here. And I'm not, I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm just uh, correcting some of the theories you're throwing out about Linux. And, <laughs> Cause that's all that is. You're just making that up and type, type in it and say, Hey, that's a fact. And it's not, but yeah, taking the screenshot's great because sometimes they'll go back and delete it. And you can always re add reply and be like, hey, you dropped this with a picture. They don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I don't understand it. Like, if I accidentally deleted something, I'd want somebody to back it up for me. Oh, yeah. That, that's what no, I write about. I have uh, yeah. quite a few of uh, a certain specific someone who oh, yeah. had that particular nasty habit. <laughs> that's great. That, that's always fun. It was like, dare me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh some people dare us each and every week to show up and live we are. on wednesdays and Yay. it's kind of brilliant we get to bring this we get to party we get to hang out with you and you get to listen to it live or after the fact and all that and the easiest way you can help us continue doing that without taking break we can take breaks for floating air pedro but we're not going to take breaks to try to sell you a mattress or a piece of hardware or this magnificent who makes this bubba keg 52 which leads bubba. me Maybe there's more advanced versions. Hmm. Uh, I wonder what the 53 looks like. <laughs> ah, it's too powerful. Do not speak it. <laughs> but uh, patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast. Uh, we get a bunch of rewards if you can kick us some coin. If you like listening to this show, this is just the creamy middle part. There's a beginning and end that you don't even hear. And we record that for you in podcast format. We got a gang of people. Helping us out, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, name of the credit, special shows, you get early access to a gig of stuff, and I like to drop videos, give you a little sneak peek. I'm like, mm -hmm. Hey, what do you think of this? Maybe you should change it around? Most importantly, if you subscribe to us on Twitch or you are a patron, you can sync up your Discord account. That is our Slack. That's where we hang out. Six days a week. We are in there. I know it's three o'clock my time. This morning, Pedro was in a discussion about something. I was like, really? It's like three o'clock? Which it was still early for you too, man. It was, like, it was 7 a.m. That's usually when I come around here and I sit down and I turn this box on. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful penguins from all over the world. That, that thing just goes 24-7, which is, uh, it's, it's definitely interesting, at least once a week. I'm like, are we really going to have a discussion about this? This? This is where we're drawing the line this week. All right. Uh i'm absolutely okay with that i love when uh, especially when strider comes in with something new mm -hmm. to be annoyed about and everyone else goes but why <laughs> <laughs> those are always fun <laughs> this week um finish your sentences with and that's why Wayland's a superior uh display manager <laughs> okay
It'll <laughs> <laughs> be great. It'll make everyone happy. But we got one person to thank multiple times, Jill. Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, our Theron gifted me a pink XLR noodle from my wish list. And I, I saw you post to- that. I saw you post that <laughs> in Discord, Jill Bryant. And like a lot of things, I'm not, it, I just had a tablet with Discord open. And I remember, I remember looking, but it's kind of around the corner. I'm like, why did Jill get a jump rope? <laughs> it does look like a jump rope, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to hooking hooking this up. It'll it'll be in in my shot next week. So, uh, but Artharen writes, "Hi, Auntie Jill." <laughs> That's what he calls me in chat. I love Artharen. <laughs> so, hope this pink XLR noodle will will serve you well. May the newt newt be with you. Love from Artharen and. Uh, Newt, Newt being one of my favorite penguins called Pingu, claymation penguin. <laughs> Newt, Newt. <laughs> so thank you so much, Arthur. And this is going to get a lot of use. And you were able to find the six foot version. It's been sold out a lot. So you you snatched it when you saw it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Arthur and uh, his, uh, well, it's basically mm-hmm. late Christmas. And <laughs> uh, he sent me a game on Steam, uh, specifically Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Order that I was playing yesterday on stream. I'm Yay. not going to blame him for the uh, 8 bit new controller dying. That, that was just uh, a bonus, sort of, man. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that was a bonus. That was that, uh, introducing a, some karmic balance into my life. That is genuinely a bad ROI. It's like a dance monkey and he gets to break something of yours. Yep. That's ah. nice. <laughs> the best. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, I've actually been very curious about that game, so thank you. EA. It's in the game. That's that's his great loophole. It breaks controllers. Yeah, right. <laughs> probably did. There's, there's probably gonna be check Proton D B. There's a bunch of like Burnt out. Bluetooth. My controller died. Chips out, so just smoke themselves. <laughs> also, I'll give a man another shout out because he, he just went around. I don't Aww. know if anything will load up. Load it up. Mm-hmm. But I had some trend transceivers. We got a wish zone. Everybody's got a wish zone. I got one for the studio. That's how you in, end up like on this where I'll publicly shoot nice. you randomly in different videos. Yay. There's around there. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I needed some extra transceivers just to test out with the um, 10 gig cards. He's like, boom, here's two. And I'm like, right on, man. So I threw them and we're currently using them right now. They, they're blinking furiously and nothing's exploded. So Aww. I consider that an absolute <laughs> nice. <laughs> the data bits are going through and it's working. I'm not going yep. to say when because I haven't filled out the warranty and registration card for this thing yet. Aww. <laughs> I, Theron was asking, where's the shilling penguin? We're missing out, Vin. <laughs> <laughs> Your little shilling penguin you put in the, on the screen. <laughs> you mean the oh, you paid extra for the exploding ones. Well, uh, <laughs> you think you need to get your money back there, Theron? <laughs> I can like the penguins on the penguins not on the show. What are you talking about? Oh, it used to be. Uh, it used to be uh, for that Saturday show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it used to be here. You tested it on LWW. Twenty twenty one. Come on, come, come, come to us, Jill. Go living in the past. <laughs> well, it needs to be in both places on both shows. You just guaranteed it'll never show up on this show. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time for a slice of oh. pie. <laughs> Brought to you by Sarah Lynn Sweets. The only thing I want to do. I don't know who it. Sarah Lynn is, but apparently she makes uh, some mean banana pie. It's a caramel yeah. pie for pie day. All banana I want cream to do pie, that, huh? Yummy. I want to yeah. put that in the microwave and see what happens. Oh, uh, that reminds me, I actually put a steak in the microwave last week, <laughs> but that was a reheat. Apologies, uh, hang on, hang on, dish girlfriend. <laughs> that was a reheat, it was leftovers, uh, there were a bunch of steaks, uh, those uh, pork steaks that I had to do because they were- Which we learned were, quite a bit about pork steaks in the after shows in the last Yes, week. we did. And, and uh, I- put the leftovers in the fridge and the very next day I put the steaks in the microwave and as soon as I closed the door it's like Ding! oh I just did it didn't I mm-hmm. okay <laughs> and they were good so yeah <laughs> they were already cooked it was just a reheat but they were good is that where you get mm-hmm. your newfound ability to defy gravity <laughs> was apparently the secret all along stick microwave mm. 
<laughs> How did it survive a reheat? I, I mean, not not asking like it didn't like kick the door open and was like I can't tell you what I've been through, but like texture wise, it's like, mostly in the preparation. Uh, they were dunked in red wine. <laughs> So tr- attempt to drown the stick before? Yes. Okay. I, I drowned the stick in red wine and rosemary and uh, garlic. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yummy. Let's talk about what we started with. And this one's going right. to be a mutant. Uh, slice of pie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about other mutations of nature. The mutant C V3. And uh, this one is... Um, it's one of those projects that you could put together around your Raspberry Pi, but not just a Raspberry Pi. It's uh, compatible with the Asus Tinkerboard S and the Pine H64 Model B, as well as the Banana Pi, conveniently enough. Uh, the uh, You could use uh, any one of those as the brains. You can also add some extra boards like the Arduino Shield and whatever else you can fit around it. The article that will be in the show notes, it has everything that you'll need from capacitors and resistors to the PCBs, where you can get the PCBs printed. Uh, all the, I think there's three different PCBs that you'll need to put something like this together. And it is genuinely, uh, if someone made a kit out of that with, you know, just all of the amenities except for the... Uh, the pie in the Arduino. Oh, I'd buy it. That that pine sill needs some heavy duty soldering because it's well, it's done a very good job up to now. So, <laughs> lots yeah, of projects. More, please. <laughs> uh, I'm just waiting for it to explode or something like that. I don't know. Uh, to the that, oscilloscope, it doesn't do that. I like this. I like Hopefully. the idea of it. I like that it's compact. <laughs> it's got the slidey screen, but. Pretty good. I can't even say the bad engineering because I remember when I got my first uh, Android phone, like the Moto G1 or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big chunk of and uh, mm-hmm. that thing worked until the day I got rid of it and like bonded off in someone. So I guess that like that would be a very involved project for uh, for me personally. That would be a lot of time sync for the. That's neat. All right. <laughs> but that's the thing. Um, I like the time sync to just put it together and then rarely touch it again. Oscilloscope. Uh, the <laughs> uh, it is, for me, absolutely about the building and the putting it together. And yeah, the uh, author person gives you everything that you need. Well, it lists everything that you need. And that doesn't look particularly complicated. Someone just needs no, to go through. Good to have a, a nice 3D printer too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Outside of that, just get somebody go through and make a Melzer's parts list so I can click on one thing and get it all at one time and not have to shop. <laughs> we just buy. Yeah. <laughs> take a picture of all the parts. I'm like, Pedro, you know what I could be doing? <laughs> uh, with a, uh, a resin printer and. Uh, 100% infill, maybe? <laughs> Dude, I have, I kick-started the first maker bot, man. I could print that in a few weeks. <laughs> maybe. It'll be a little more chonky than that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it would require some filing afterwards. <laughs> if I can extract it from Lots of plate, sanding. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. If you want to tell us about your plates or your ability to microwave steaks, how can you do that? The best way to do it, just leave us some uh, culinary tips in general, if you'd like. LinuxGameCast.com, there's a contact button. Fill out the form. No need to, you know, track us down and uh, pass surreptitious, thinly veiled, threatening messages into our uh, mail uh, <laughs> slots. You can absolutely just fill out the form, pick uh, LWDW as the show that you'd like to send your feedback to. Other Otherwise, we may be tempted to misconstrue it as some hate mail for the Saturday show. Well, you don't want that. You say misconstrue, I say I'm not bellish. <laughs> I mean, either way, it turns into something. Uh, yes. <laughs> we turn it to content. That's a brilliant way to do it. Yeah, hit us on Twitter, <laughs> YouTube, all that. Leave a comment on the web zone if you want to do that, because, hey, we all, we all get that message. I'm like, what? Oh, somebody <laughs> Well, here's here's what happens. It's usually like a laser focused question of like, oh, new user registration, huh? Password change. Oh, this is going somewhere. 
someone cares. Right. Okay. Right. It's like, okay, not a bot. Um, okay. But yeah, use that. Send us a message on Patreon. That's a guaranteed way to get hold to us uh, using the contact form. That's why it's there. It's the first thing I check in the morning. I have a dedicated email box that goes to and I'm like, oh, that's for Pedro. That's for Jordan. That's for Jill. That's for me. And that's how that works out. And I'm like, oh, we'll probably talk about that on the show. Just to make sure, because mm-hmm. I hate not being able to get a hold of people. So I've done everything that I can think to do to make it easy to get a hold to us. So use it. All right. Somebody utilize Twitter because last week I, I sent out the show. We talked about Solus. Yeah, the wonderful new release 4.2. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, the best DKM. S3 less, distro out there. Yes. yes. <laughs> system that you can get. And I'm like, you know, I just mentioned some things. And I remember saying on the show, I was quite curious because I was like shrugging. I was like, why did, why did you nuke uh, YouTube DL? It didn't make any sense. I'm like, reasons, I guess. And Joshua got old. Uh, he's like, hey, man, <laughs> correction. We mm-hmm. didn't remove YouTube DL. We switched it to YouTube DLC and have a replaces in place. There was no user visible change and it circumvented issues at the time related to the RIA filing that took down YouTube DL itself. Fair. I will say. Now, I might also say, my honor. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my defense, I would like to present Aww. Exhibit A from GetSoul.us, the website that says packages removed. <laughs> Subsection YouTube-DL, which is verbatim. <laughs> what I said. Yeah, and the YouTube DLC is just called YT DLC, so... Well, yeah, okay. In all fairness, like up here, <laughs> up here, up here, package is yep. added. All right. That doesn't explain that. No, it doesn't <laughs> because people immediately recognize YouTube DLC. Why, uh, sorry, uh, YouTube DL. YT DLC. What's that? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, <laughs> you know what? At, at the end of the day, we've clarified that. And that makes sense. Explanations like that should probably be included on that page. Uh, but uh, asterisks. Yeah. With cliff notes. Asterisks are great, man. Because sometimes I'll just throw them in things and just write little messages to you at the bottom that are not related. It's brilliant. Well, thank you like to that. Joshua Strobel, the project lead at Solus. <laughs> yep. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. We're going to bounce out of here. Before we do that, we're going to kick in some music and roll some credits as is tradition. Let's see if we can get all that accomplished at one time. I'm walking and chewing bubble gum. Can I do it? Yes. (laughs) Yay. Yes, you throw in a little asterix and uh, you're good. (laughs) Careful with the obelix, though. (laughs) Wow. What just went <laughs> and on? Welcome, my bla- Blue my Eye brain just Anime like, Slayer. Like... <laughs> oh, was that how long it took to reset? No, I was just going to let you get to the end of the credits. Right. <laughs> Thank you to our sea monsters <laughs> and all our wonderful patrons. <laughs> Seriously, every single and one of you, you're awesome. We love you all. And thanks again, our Theron. Big hugs. Library.tv <laughs> at the next experiment. It may or may not exist. <laughs> Schrodinger's <laughs> web zone. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>